What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another great edition of this podcast. That is called The Hit. Today with me, I have a guest with me today, and he is a dear, dear friend of mine. We both went to school together. He is the digital ringer for WWL, my good friend, Johan Castro. What is up, my man? Hey, how's it going? I'm I'm a digital ringer. I'm one of one of many uh, at, at WWL, but I'm happy to be here, happy to jump on and, and talk some Saints, so I'm excited. Well, let's dive right into it, you guys. So last night was the first preseason game, and the first teamers, of course, you didn't see Alvo Kamara or none of them, but... You saw the first team offensive line, and you also got to see Andy Dalton. What I want to – Andy Dalton looked good in my opinion, but first I'm going to go to Johan and get his opinion. What? How did you think Andy Dalton performed? I mean, given that he only played one series and was only on the field for about, what, eight or nine plays, he looked as good as you can look. He went five for five. Uh, what was it, 51 yards, 61 yards in the, in the touchdown? I mean, the offense was just – they looked so clean, uh, you know, in that first drive. I actually sent a tweet out. I, I called him Andy Marino because everything was just so <laughs> accurate and so clean. He had one pass to Callaway that was just about as – it was about as sharp as we've ever seen anything from a Saints quarterback in the last year and a half. So, uh, no, I mean, I was very impressed with Andy Dalton. And what's crazy is that the statistic going into halftime, I think the Saints had a hundred and like twenty some odd yards of total offense. And they basically all came from that drive, or at least the vast majority came from that one drive. So um it's hard not to be impressed by Andy Dalton. He he looked really good, proved that he's probably among the top three backups in the league as it stands. So going to Calvin now. I want to get your opinion on how the offensive line looked on that drive because we got to see James Hurst start. Andres Pete was out there, McCoy. The only one that wasn't out there was Ryan Ramshack. So I want to get your take on how did you think the offensive line looked uh, during the Andy Dalton series? Uh, so, fun fact, uh, I was actually in a scrimmage. I was scrimmaging during the first uh, half uh, up here at Tech for our fan fest and all that. But I went home and I uh, made sure to rewatch it. I made sure to record it. Um, Offensive line looked pretty good, man, but I, I think the the gap between James Hurst and, and Trevor Penning is a little bit bigger than we thought. Um, Trevor Penning, I, I, I really wanted him to maybe go in and start, but I had a feeling that James Hurst was, he was ultimately going to win this job. And I think game one kind of showed, like, okay, James Hurst is the left tackle right now, and that's just how it's going to be. Trevor Penning obviously is a very talented guy, but he struggled. He struggled with consistency. He's pretty good in the run game. He has great aggressiveness, but as far as the passing game, I mean, the guy looks a little rough right now. I mean, I, I'm just going to need to see a lot of improvement over these next couple games. And so for me to comfortably say, okay, I'm cool with him having real game time minutes, because if it, if James Hurst went down, I honestly can't say that I'm confident in Trevor Penning right now to consistently perform. I'll, I'll say he'll he'll probably be on the level of Steven uh, Ruiz last year. Just that very inconsistent, but he'll have good plays here, bad plays there. When he's bad, he's bad type situation. So that's some things I've seen there. So um, to jump look, off to jump off of what he just said, um, you got to keep in mind though, it, very rarely do you have a rookie jump in that's great right off the bat. I mean Armstead in his first season. He backed up uh, – who was it, Charles Brown he backed up? Thanks, so. uh, And And Charles Brown was terrible. But Armstead, when he would see action, he would get burned left and right. So I think it's just kind of a development thing. Um, same situation. Armstead went to a really small FCS school. Henning went to a small FCS school. So it's just going to take time for him to refine his skill set. He looked decent in the run game, um, but he, he's definitely got to work on his pass protection, and that will come in time. And, you know, not everybody can be, you know, Ryan Ramchick come in first year starting to be one of the best tackles in the game. Exactly. Um, but, you know, I mean, I'm I'm still thankful that we at least have a James Hurst. A lot of teams, like you look at the Broncos, they drafted Gary Bowles, and he had to come out and start immediately, you know. And he was rough his first year. A lot of holding calls on him. So I'm glad we at least have a guy who could be serviceable right now. I agree with all that. And – like y'all said, Pennant looked good in the run game, but pass game, it was like night and day. And, I mean, I know he's 
blocking for Ian Book, but you still have to know how to block and pass protection. He just looked absolutely like a kindergartner out there. He, that's some something he has to work on. But while we're on the topic of the run game, we got to see people like Tony Jones Jr., Dwayne Washington, Devon Gazebo, and even my boy, Abram Smith, play. And everyone knows how much I love him. So I want to get Johan's opinion first on how he thought maybe like Dwayne Washington and Tony Jones Jr. looked. How, did you think that they kind of pulled away, made a gap in between our, the running back three spot, per se? I don't know if I'd say they pulled away. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that Washington is probably the favorite right now. I mean, given that he started the game and did most of the damage early on, I'd say he's probably the clear favorite to be running back number three. And then Tony Jones Jr., uh, who's been in the system, had some really, really impressive explosive plays. Uh, you know, he's in the mix, too. You know, when you're in a situation like the Saints are in where, you know, you've got your two prohibitive starters at running back, you know, you can you can be picky and, and, and really take the guys that you, you think are going to suit what you're doing the best. Um, and typically in a situation like that, you're going to roll with the veterans. You're going to roll with the guys that know the system. Um, I know you love Abram Smith and, uh, and I think he's really talented. I've heard some reports that he's, you know, he's, he's been stellar, uh, in practice, but I think as of right now, he's probably, uh, he and a Zigbo are, are probably the two odd men out. Um, if, if I had to give, I guess, a prediction, I'd say, it's probably Washington three, Jones four at the moment, and then either Smith or Zigbo is going to compete for a special team spot or at the very least a practice squad spot. So, Calvin, uh, do you want to bounce off of that? I want to get your take on the, how the running backs look too. Um, now, you know, purely, purely just because I know how much you love Amos Smith, I usually play devil's advocate uh, against him. I, I do like the guy, but, you know, I kind of have to give that, that opposing opinion on him. But uh, just, you know, all that aside, uh, I'm going to have to agree with y'all here. I mean, Dwayne Washington had a receiving touchdown, too. And, you know, we we like throwing the ball to running backs. I mean, it's just how this offense has been. Pete Carmichael, I'm sure, is not really going to change much of that. Not too sure, but I'm pretty sure he's going to stay on pace with that. And Avery Smith, I mean, he averaged 4.3 yards a carry. I mean, that was pretty good. That was the most on the entire team. But it's like Johan said, I mean, he's the odd man out here. Um, it was him that fumbled too, wasn't it? I, I yeah. believe it was him. It was, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> when 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 you have people who are fourth, fifth, sixth string in a preseason game, and you fumble or drop a pass, I mean, I'm not going to say the rise on the wall, but it's going to be really hard for you to climb back from getting cut. And I mean, just how I think that Dennis is. Allen said. I think Dennis Allen said that you know, yeah, he showed flashes of brilliance, but. But if you're dropping the ball, that's a problem. Like, yeah, man, that's, that's that's number yeah. one thing. That's number one thing for running backs. It doesn't matter what you do, you don't drop the ball. And this was goal line. Like, you're two yards away from scoring, and you fumble. I mean, that's a critical error, and critical errors will get you cut, especially when you are fourth, fifth, sixth string. Johan said Tony Jones has been in this, uh, has been in this uh, the system. Dwayne Watson, I like him on special teams. Avery Smith is also a special teams guy, but Dwayne Washington just seems like he can do a little bit more right now since he did catch that pass and touchdown. So, I mean, Dwayne Washington has been here for like five years on special teams, and he's been serviceable. So, I, I don't really see him going away from him. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do think Avery Smith is – I'm not going to say he'll be on these first cuts, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's on the second cut. So, to kind of piggyback off of that, going back and watching the film – and you and I are both defensive players, so we know how it is when it comes to, like, we've done punch-out drills. And Aaron was in the air for whatever reason on that run, and then that's how the ball got punched out. It's easier than it – some people might think it's hard to punch a ball out, but if someone's in the air, it is quite easy to do. I mean, I'm sure if you've done it quite a few times, Calvin, I've done it quite a few times. But it could be fixed. Fumbles can be fixed. It's not like he – every single – run that he had it was a fumble but it can be fixed and I think he was the more explosive running back out of all the ones that got to play today but if I had to guess I'd say Tony Jones Jr. looked better than Dwayne Washington and he's had an incredible camp but want to move down the line 
for more uh, the receivers. One guy that you know I'm a huge fan of, and me and Johan actually got to see play in person quite a bit. Even I hate it when we played him, but Calvin, what did you think about Dejon Dixon? Pretty good, man. Uh, hey, I, I've never said I didn't like the guy, but I always made it known. Hey, as much as we like him, he does have a very hard, 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 and very high yeah. hill to climb. I mean, that wide receiver room is basically locked out from, I think, like, what, one through five, basically? So, I mean, honestly, honestly, in order for him to make the team, he's going to have to make it as a special teamer. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you're, yeah, I mean, you've got, obviously, Thomas, Alave, Landry are one, two, and three. Deontay Hardy's going to be your return specialist slash uh, kind of your gadget guy. And then Callaway and Smith are probably, you know, your next guy's behind that so yeah i mean he's he's hoping basically to just kind of make as a special teamer here to start out and i would i would go as far to say that him and kevin white right now are competing uh for the special team spot because i believe he had dixon uh and white as the two gunners um i think kevin white missed a couple tags i can't quite remember but they were running gunner so you know, they Dixon does – I'm pretty sure he does understand. He's going to have to make it in special teams. But Dwayne Washington is also a gunner. You know, we just talked about him. Um, JT Gray, he's still there as a gunner. I mean, you're not going to beat out JT Gray for a gunner. You're not. He went to the Pro Bowl for that, basically. So, he he does have a very hard hit to climb. He did very well receiving-wise, but like Johan said, I mean, receiving right now, he, he's going to have to make his money in special teams if he, if he wants to be on this roster. So, Johan, my question would be to you. Do you think, because we all know how much big fans we are of Tra- Traquan Smith, do you think he can beat out Traquan Smith? It's going to it's gonna be tough, man. It, I mean, now, Traquan Smith had, had some drops last night, which oh, that'll God. help. That'll help uh, his case. And Traquan Smith's been inconsistent in his career. But, like I said, you know, in regards to the running backs, typically – when there's a competition, they're going to favor the veteran if it's close, right? Now, if Traquan Smith continues to have drops and Dejon Dixon, you know, is a little bit more consistent and, you know, shows more potential on special teams, then conceivably, yeah, he can beat out Traquan Smith. But, you know, I, I think it's going to take something stellar or, you know, it's going to take Traquan Smith making a few errors to really, uh, to really get at least for Dixon to – really find a solid spot on the team so calvin so watching the game last night just kind of moving on to the next topic who were your biggest disappointments in the game last night just give me at least two or three of your biggest disappointments from last Mm -hmm. night and then i'll go back to johan and ask him the same thing um really i'm going to give you one um and then i'm gonna give you another one who's not really necessarily disappointment but kind of understood uh, the understood one is Trevor Penning. Um, you know, I didn't expect him to come out here and just be pancaking everybody and be the best uh, pass blocker of all time. Like, we know he got to develop. Um, but Ian Book, man, um, yeah. getting getting Gary Grayson vibes from him. Not – Jesus. Just, just from drafting a guy in the fourth round and he's just not good at all. Um, 15 for 22 looks good on paper, but the throw that he was missing, I mean, it's, you, you can't really do that. And, and it's, it, I know he's the third string guy and you may never see the third string guy, but it's pretty important to have, you know, at least another quarterback that's, that's good. I mean, we had Trevor Simeon. I personally liked Trevor Simeon last year as the third guy. I think he was pretty serviceable. I mean, he ended up being two, but let's all be honest. He was really the third string. But I think he was pretty serviceable. I mean, he made the throws. Just we just didn't have the receivers to help him. Um, but Ian Book just looks like he's running around every play. I understand he doesn't have the starting offensive line, but it's just like he's just running for his life every play, scramble drill every play, just trying to make something happen. Just you need to calm down a little bit, make his progressions, chill out. And he, he just looks like he did in the Dolphins game. And and I just I don't see any improvement from the guy. And I'm not saying cut him, but I mean I know you're on Twitter talking about go sign Cole Kelly and, and we signed KJ Costello. So, I mean, Ian, Ian might, might be on the way out, man. I, I don't know. So, uh, Johan, uh, 
who is outside of Ian Book? I'm going to assume Ian Book is on your list too. But uh, that was my the, pick, man. The, <laughs> that's everybody's big, biggest disappointment, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, well, well, like here's the thing, you know. I don't remember who tweeted it out, or maybe no one tweeted it out. Maybe it was just you know a commentator said it. But basically, what last night showed was if God forbid Jameis Winston and Andy Dalton both get injured, uh, Taysom Hill will probably be the quarterback again. Um, because Ian Book just, I mean, I hate to say this about him, but he's not an NFL quarterback. Um, he, he, he doesn't, he can't make the throws. Like you said, you know, he's in scramble drill, basically every single play. Um, you know, now the good thing is, is again, he is a third stringer, you know, he's not someone who's competing for a starting job. So he does still have time to improve, but I mean, it looks like his development is, is not really going according to what Sean Payton thought it would um, when they drafted him. And now that Sean Payton's gone, I, I really don't see kind of where, you know, I don't see the proper direction, you know, as to, as to why to keep him around. You know, he, he just, he looks kind of lost out there. You know, he's, he's short, six foot, but he's not like Drew Brees. He's not, you know, nailing quick passes like that and, you know, has that pinpoint accuracy. He's just kind of – he looks just kind of lost out there. So the best way I can put it. Do y'all think – I'm going to ask both of y'all this. Do y'all think we should go out and sign another quarterback to be third string or, God forbid, second string? Should anything happen? I'm going to go to Johan first. I – don't necessarily think they need to do that. I mean, we haven't even seen KJ Costello. Um, now, granted, I, you know, you're talking about third string quarterbacks here. Really, you don't want to be in a position where you need a third string quarterback. Um, but you know, it's it's all up to Mickey Loomis and Dennis Allen. You know, if they feel like they need to get, you know, yet another person to back up Jameis and Andy Dalton. I mean, look, you know, Jameis is last couple of years you know he obviously tore his ACL last season and now he's dealing with a foot issue I'm not saying he's injury prone but you know he has been injured right and Andy Dalton has been in the league a long time and he's had his injury issues too so maybe they feel okay we need to get you know another quarterback just to kind of help the room out make sure that you know god forbid worst case scenario we have somebody and obviously if enough guys get hurt they will do that but I mean it it's really hard to say whether or not they should or should not get uh, another quarterback. I think it's pretty clear that Jameis and Andy Dalton are one and two, and, you know, you just kind of figure everything else out from there. What do you think, Kevin? Hey, let, me, let me just say, I mean, you, we got to be a, a, a darn good football team if we're sitting here being picky about third-string quarterback. But, I mean, to be fair, you know, if you look at the Cowboys a couple years ago when Dak went down, Andy Dalton was on the team, he went down. Now you're looking at third string. I believe the right. third string went down, and now you're on fourth string. And you've seen how terrible it was after it got past Andy Dalton. So it is important. Like I said, you know, it is important to have a good third string quarterback. But, I, you know, I, I also don't really think that it's something that we need right now. Um, you know, KJ Costello, got to see what he can do. Plus, there's a lot of talent out there. Um, there's a lot, a lot of talent out there at, at the quarterback position. I mean, you could really sign a third string quarterback, fourth string quarterback, whatever mid-season if you really wanted to like it, it's a luxury thing you like I don't know why in the preseason you know you necessarily need to grab one right now I mean if we're being perfectly honest I'd be shocked if KJ KJ Costello made the team and given how Ian Book played last night I think he's probably got one more shot to make the team because if he doesn't look good moving forward then he probably won't be in it either so yeah I mean like you said you know if if injuries if injuries weigh us down, then, then yeah, I mean, obviously you have to get someone, but, but I think they're at a pretty good spot at one and two right now. And Hey, you know, there's always a, uh, I mean, we signed Blake Bortles late in the season last year. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine, you know, with a Blake Bortles at the third string, fourth string. I mean, the guy went to an AFC championship game. I mean, I can't argue with that. Um, so yeah, I think, I think, you know, we're just cherry picking here. You know, it's like, you know, I said, it is a luxury, but, as far as the quarterbacks go, I mean, I think we're pretty fine right now. If we do go sign someone, I mean, there's plenty of names out there that are talented enough that I think we just put the ball in the right spots and not panic when they're out there. So that's why I got on that. So 
moving forward, the defense, even the backups, looked pretty darn good last night, you guys. And one person I have to highlight is Chase Hansen getting cut, what, like twice this month alone and coming back and having a pretty darn good game. The defense as a whole and the first teamers and the second teamers look pretty damn good. So I want to get Calvin's opinion. Well, how do you think the defense in your eyes looked? Is there any is there a position that needs improvement? Where do they need to improve at in the defense, if at all? Well, see, I was a little concerned about uh, the linebacking core going into this just because of – I feel like us not resigning Quan was big because I fear that injuries will happen. You know, DeMario's not getting any younger. I'm not saying he's going to get hurt or anything. He's been pretty durable. But, you know, we don't know how age will affect you. Um, Pete Werner, he's dealing with a groin injury. I feel like that might just bother him for the entire season. Because those things, those type of nitpicking injuries, those are the ones that's going to get you and affect your play. Um, but Chase Hansen coming out here and, and balling out, that that gave me a little bit of confidence. Um, you know, also Demario uh, Jackson's down too. So Chase Hansen coming in and balling out, that that that's a bill of confidence to me. I'm cool with that. But another guy I need to shout out is, is Justin Evans. He played solid coverage all game and caught himself a pick. Um, I can't be mad at that, man. I can't be mad at the, the defense, but I can't really say too much about defense right now because our starting guys, a lot of them didn't play. And that's who we really want to see. You know, we, we got to get a game where we got at least all of them in the first quarter just so they can get the chemistry down and play with each other. I mean, it's very important to do that. So maybe game three or four, we see them. But um, as far as from what we've seen so far, I, I think the defense is pretty solid. Want to pick back on Yeah, yeah. Chase Hansen, uh, if he has another game like that, good chance he could start. Um, because Zach Vaughn has not delivered so far in his career. I'm not saying he can't or he can't turn it around or anything like that. But Zach Vaughn hasn't, you know, really seen the field the way they thought that he would when they drafted him. So if Chase Hansen has another game where he leads the team in tackles and, you know, he's – he, I mean, he looked excellent at points last night where he was just getting into the backfield. I think he got, what, one or two TFLs last night? I mean – First play of the game. Yeah, yeah. So, honestly, if he uh, if he keeps performing like that in the next two preseason games, there's a good chance I could see him starting. Um, and, and like you said, them not bringing back Quan Alexander, I think – I don't think that was a great idea. Now, I understand the rationale behind it. You know, they, they wanted Pete Werner to kind of, you know, they wanted to make it clear that that's, you know, he's starting, it's his position now. But he's dealing with injuries, and he dealt with some last year as well. You know, linebacker's kind of the one position on the defensive side of the ball that uh, I personally have some concerns about at the moment. But if Chase Hansen plays like that, I, I think they'll be all right. I, they can certainly hold it down with Demario Davis, Hanson, and Warner when he gets back. And let's not forget, Eric Wilson didn't look too bad last night either. I mean, no, he didn't. Not at all. I mean, if it wasn't for Eric Wilson, Chase Hanson wouldn't have caught that interception. So that was pretty good. That's an underrated pickup, in my opinion. So now moving let, forward, now let me now let me just say real quick uh, with Zach Ball. Ahead. I mean, God, every time I hear his name, I, I just sit there and be like, man, I really forgot he's on the team. Um, kind of, kind of like Takaha vibes, you know, someone who should be told, but comparison. just isn't. But for me personally, I, I think we need to move him to the end. Uh, in college, he was more of that coming down the line type of linebacker. He was more of a pass rushing linebacker rather than coverage. And we have him in a lot of coverage, and he's 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 flailing at it a lot. Even last year or two years ago, when he played a lot of snaps, he's flailing at it. So. I think maybe just to see if he's even just worth being on the team still. I mean, outside of special teams, of course. I think we need to just put him on the line for a little bit because, I mean, you never have too many DNs in this league. You just can't, you know. Especially with our DNs, Peyton Turner and Marcus Davenport, I mean, they're probably good for about at least three games a year where they're not playing. And you need those guys. Um, and once again, you know, Cam Jordan, he's, he's getting older too. So, you know, put Zach Bond on the line, see what he can do. Well, 
I actually don't mind that idea because when I went to I went to two of the practices and whenever they would put like the backups in or they were subbing and out, someone would always get burned on like in the flats or on the outside. And I was like, well, who was that? Then I look, I'm like, oh, there's Zach Bond. Wow. Like I wasn't surprised to be honest with you because coverage has never been his strength, even coming out of college. But I want to talk about the Green Bay game next week. So I want to get your – do y'all think we will see Jameis next week in the preseason game? And if so, do y'all think he just plays a series or just like five plays and get him the heck out of there? I'm going with no. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen him personally. Logan, you, you've seen him personally uh, with his leg and all that and the length and, and all that. Uh, I, just, I just don't really think the Saints want to throw him out there especially in the second preseason game, coming off an ACL injury. I would say it'll probably be the last preseason game we see him, and it probably will be for just one drive, if that. Uh, I'm not going to be too upset if he doesn't play preseason, just purely from an injury standpoint. But if he's completely fine and healthy, I think he needs to at least play uh, uh, a series. I think all the stars need to play at least a series. Like I said, to get the chemistry going, because, you know, the Saints are known for their slow starts, those 0-2s, 0-3s, and that's to me, from a chemistry standpoint, like that's important. You need to play with the guys. You need to have everybody all hands on deck. So, just for chemistry purposes, you got to get those guys out there. Got to get the timing down. All that's important. So, um, but I, I'm going to go with no. We're not going to see him from an injury standpoint. I'll say, I'll say, well, it depends on his health. Uh, if his foot is better and, you know, they feel like he can go, then I could conceivably see him playing in the Green Bay game, but it's not going to be more than a series. And even if he plays against the Chargers in the last preseason game, not going to be more than a series. Um, the whole idea is you want to really see how that knee has healed. You know, how's his mobility? How is his movement? Even, you know, you know, a post-torn ACL. Uh, I also personally want to see Michael Thomas play at least a series because I want to see how he's recovered and how, you know, he reacts to game speed. So, um, it all depends on his health. I mean, if, if he's good enough to go, then I'd say, yeah, put him in for a drive. But but uh, if he doesn't play, I wouldn't be surprised. So we are running out of time here, but I want to get Johan's record prediction for the season before I let him go. Johan, give me your bold record prediction for this season. Well, look, they got to start fast. They have to start fast because their, their schedule midseason is a gauntlet. They have, I think, seven of eight games against playoff teams from a season ago, and the one game that isn't against the playoff teams against Baltimore, who should have been a playoff team. So I'll say either – I guess I'll go 10-7, and 9-8 and eight in that range, um, maybe 11-6 and six if they really put it together. Uh but yeah, I think nine, eight, ten, and seven, something like that's probably realistic. That's where I have it. That's where I hit it. I have them at nine and eight. But Johan, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come be the first guest on the podcast. I did promise you that you would be the first guest, and now I'm in my word. So thank you for joining us today. Of course, and uh, and and thank you for having me on. And anytime, man, I I you know always love to talk. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Well, you guys, this has been another great edition of The Hit. We shall see you guys next time.